<clears throat> okay, uh, so happy birthday, uh, Nicolas Grimshaw, uh, an important uh, British architect. And we are going to, to look at uh, some of his works in detail. So Sir Nicolas Grimshaw, born October 9th, 1939, is a proeminent English architect, particularly noted for several modernist buildings, including London's Waterloo International Railway Station and the Eden Project in Cornwall. He was president of the Royal Academy from 2004 to 2011. He was chairman of Grimshaw Architects, formerly Nicholas Grimshaw and Partners, from its foundation to 2019, when he was succeeded by Andrew Whaley. He's a recipient of the Riba Gold Medal. Uh, here he is in a, maybe a little bit strange picture. As you can see, the eyeglasses the, 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 uh, are as peculiar as uh, other architects have them. I, I, I truly think uh, architects have a problem with the eyeglasses, with the frames. Many architects uh, sport um, almost bizarre, um, you know, frames for their eyeglasses, and I wonder why. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll go rather quickly because we also have to talk about um, Claude Perrault and uh, Carl Friedrich Schinkel. So I'll show in total about uh, 500 pictures today. So it, it will be a, a mini marathon. So Nicolas Grimshaw, happy birthday to you again, sir. Uh, he's, uh, I think, 82 years old today. If I count it well, I, I, I think, well, no, he, if he was born in, anyway, he, he's alive, but uh, let me see, because I'm actually curious. Um, when was he born? My memory is not so good. 1939. So yeah, <clears throat> he's 82 years old. Drawings. I always begin with drawings after showing some pictures of the architect. Uh, a very uh, minute, uh, you know, architect, you know, studying, you see here, details of, uh, of how the building um, is built. And this is rather unusual because we see here technical, you know, technical uh, details. And drawn uh, in, a, in a very sensitive way, I would say. So he is a, a, an important architect. And I'm surprised that, uh, you know, at 80, uh, he gave up his position of, uh, he was, you know, the, the leader and the founder of uh, Nicholas Grimshaw Partners. Anyway, these are his uh, notebooks with, um, you know, studies for the buildings he built. Still drawing manually and drawing very well. Not too many architects, you know, uh, his uh, statue uh, draw something like this, you know, details of this sort, but he did, and I'm glad he did. Capturing the concept, the sketchbooks of Sir Nicholas Grimshaw. So he was knighted, he received the, you know, the, 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 the honor of, uh, you know, being called Sir Nicholas Grimshaw, and this is based on his, um, you know, successes as an architect. Buildings. Okay, so we begin with the BMW headquarters in Bracknell, 1980. Uh, but this happened something to it. I, I don't know why I didn't include pictures with this. Maybe, I'm a little bit confused from 1980. There is a reason why I don't have pictures. I made this presentation two years ago. Uh, we go to the next building, Oxford Ice Rink uh, from 1984. And uh, look at the elegance of the, uh, of, of the structure. It's truly very elegant. It's high tech, but um, somehow the, the aesthetics are not uh, at all, uh, um, you know, uninteresting. It's, it's like a ship in a way. And uh, so 
technology, if it is used creatively, can also be aesthetically very ple pleasant, as in this case. A fine building, which essentially uh, is uh, interesting aesthetically exactly because of the structure. A nice skating ring. Uh, you know, you would say, what's so special about it? But uh, not too many ice rinks uh, look like this. Ice skating rings. His sketch for the building. It is high tech, but but somehow I feel it's also very sensitive, and uh, it's because he took the structure, the supporting or the, the suspending structure outside of the building, and this creates all of a sudden um, a visual interest towards the building. It facilitates the visual interest towards the building. Nicholas Grimshaw, the model. Look at the elegance of the structure. It, it's truly very elegant, and uh, no one can deny its um, its uh, you know almost artistic beauty. And it's so coherent, and at the same time is is engaging. It's interesting. I'm not an engineer, but uh, uh, I feel that there is uh, logic here and coherence. And also, from an aesthetical point of view, uh, elegance. Given an isolated site and the challenge of providing a facility for both socializing and sports, the Oxford Ice Ring combines an inspired structural response. Two 30 meter tall masts that announce themselves to the historic city center from where the masts can be glimpsed. With a relatively small budget and difficult ground conditions, as well as the need for a large column free space for the rink, Grimshaw chose to design a building that could be suspended and thereby reduce the need for piling and alleviate the load of the wide span roof. A spine uh, beam formed from uh, two rectangular box sections runs the entire 72 meters length of the building and is supported by the striking pair of masts, which make reference to Oxford's famous spires, the expensive 56 by 26 meter uh, ring is encased by a cladding system that is equally tailored to the building's function. Two thirds of the ring is clad in cold store panels with the remaining north facade being fully glazed. Like the masts, this illuminated face acts as, as a, fur, acts a further uh, advertisement for what lies within. It was unorthodox in appearance, one of the first generation of mast supported uh, long span structures to exploit the corrosion resistant coatings developed for offshore structures in the North Sea, but it was also very cheap. Let's go back because it indeed it is very important. You know, the mast is this, and the reference to the Oxford uh, uh, spires, you know, medieval looking, I think it's an, a very creative way to connect the past with the present. So, in this sense, his building is, is very, very uh, enlightening and uh, enticing. You don't have to mimic the old buildings. You can create something new in the present that still connects somehow with that past. It's a good building. Okay, now we go to the Clifton Hill Sports Center in Exeter, 1984. Again, I don't have pictures. I don't know what's going on. Financial Times, Printworks, 
in London 1988. Uh, now, this is actually the Eden project. Sorry about this. This should have been uh, this title. My, 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 my apologies. This presentation needs some corrections. This is the this is the Eden project master plan in Cornwall, and he did he did all these buildings, and we are going to look at them in detail. So it is the the Eden project in Cornwall, uh, United Kingdom. Um, let's see what is written. The Eden project endeavors to recognize our country's heritage. Well, our meaning their country heritage of plant exploration while simultaneously looking to the future. This has been successfully achieved through the transformation of a place of relative anonymity into an impressive multi multifunctional space site with visitor experience at its core. One of the primary environmental strengths of the Eden project is to consider what it replaces. Previously, the site was a China clay pit and was still being excavated during the design phase. The strategy of replacing an almost uninhabitable clay pit with a new natural habitat is perhaps in principle the biggest environmental success of Eden project. Situated on a 15 hectares, a hectares landscapes, landscape sign, it is an example of successful place making. Uh, yeah, this is maybe even his most uh, important uh, project. The Eden project has created its own unique culture comp comprising performance, educational and artistic spaces, which extend far beyond the site itself. The project currently employs around 600 permanent staff, 95% of whom were recruited locally and 75% of whom were previously unemployed. The project has four completed phases to date. The fifth phase, the edge, has its roots in the original ambition to have a biome that focuses on the desert regions of the world. So you see, it's not just about the building, but also about the fact that you know, it was in a way, and it is in a way, a sustainable project, because it's again, it's not just about architecture, but also about the fact that it employs, you know, people from the area, and 75% of whom were unemployed. And so there is also the social function of the building, not just the architectural or the aesthetic function. And this is excellent because architecture cannot neglect other issues besides the building itself. And uh, there are buildings that are, uh, you know, uh, very engaging and very or original, uh, even striking, uh, you know, almost futuristic. And it is beautiful, I think, that this, you know, futuristic architecture employs unemployed people. Uh, I think it's beautiful because, it, again, it's not just about architecture, but it's also about social justice and, you know, alleviating lives of the people from the region. Nicholas Grimshaw. So he designed all these buildings, this one included, although it's so very different from the others. He also did the, the whole master plan. So the whole thing here is done by him and, and his firm. In its original iteration, Eden was, you know, Eden, you know, the story of Eden is, is about paradise. Now, if we can create paradise on earth or not, well, it's not so easy as we know, but 
Anyway, it's called like this, was proposed as a single interconnected structure situated around the edge of the clay pit. Uh, this was an initial project. Uh, and um, very interesting, I think, because it's, it's, it's an, a bio-architecture in a way, you know. So today the entire site has been transformed from its original brownfield status into an extremely verdant collection of flowers, plants, and fruits unparalleled in the United Kingdom. The landscaping, ex landscaping extends well beyond the greenhouse biomes, making the entire site a lush garden in its own right. Again, other pictures now from the same project. Designing the biomes was an exercise in efficiency, both of space and material. Structurally, each dome is a hex tri hex space frame reliant on two layers. The efficiency of the frame relies on the components of the geometric shapes. Steel tubes and joints that are light, relatively small and easily transportable. The cladding panels are triple layer pillows of high performance ETFE foil, I don't know what it is, and environmentally efficient with maximum surface area and minimum perimeter detailing. The biomes received almost 2 million visitors in their first year of opening, and the project is now one of the top three charging attractions in, um, in the United Kingdom and the second most visited destination outside London. The Eden project has become world famous for its stunning structure and the wonder of its contents. It is making a huge contribution to the economy of Cornwall it is without doubt one of our national national treasures. This is what this person, per person uh, wrote, former Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport. Um, so they were built on a, an unstable ground, yet provide now stable, sustainable and eye-catching architecture. The original funnel structure for the biomes was superseded by bubbles that were easily adaptable to the shifting ground beneath them. So here they are. Um, But to be honest with you, something bothers me about this project. I mean, I understand its benefits for the human society, for tourists, for curious people and so on. But still somehow, I think it's about the dominance of nature by man in trapping plants inside this space. Uh, to me, is a little bit questionable especially these days, you know, why do we need to do this? You know, um, for human amusement, uh, it's, it's, I think it's problematic. You know, the human being still conquering the earth and thus actually creating the problems we are confronted with right now. I mean, you know, the plants live there, but uh, they are essentially entrapped. 
you know, in what is more or less some kind of a greenhouse. Why do we need this? Why do we need to put the animals in zoos? You know, does the zoo benefit the animals? I'm not so sure about that. So it, it's literally about creating concentration camps, if the wording is not too rough, for plants and for animals. And for uh, Native American Indians, if we think of them in the United States, where they are also placed in, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, restricted areas and, uh, you know, uh, essentially imprisoned. Anyway, hand in hand with this role as a visitor attraction, you see the attraction is, is based on the visitor, meaning on the human being. We are not so much concerned about the plant or the animal, we are concerned with the visitor, meaning the human being. And this, I think, has to stop sooner or later because uh, the results are not promising. I think the, the climate change is a result of this obsession with the visitor attraction, with the human beings having fun on this earth while we are entrapping nature. Anyway, the design concept was developed from naturally occurring geometries. The roof is the focal point of the design with the pine cone scales formed by a grid of timber panels insulated with recycled newspaper. These are clad. But these are, there are things here that I like. I mean, look, read this, insulated with recycled newspaper. I think this is very good. If we can, you know, recycle as much as we can, uh, is, 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 is a positive activity. These are clad with a standing seam system of copper paneling. My God, it's too much uh, reading. I, I, don't like, uh, I don't like it when it is too much reading. Um, I move forward. The collaboration with a sculptor, uh, this is also good that there was a sculptor uh, part of the team. Uh, he developed the idea of a large-scale granite sculpture representing the latent, latent energy found in apparently inanimate seeds. Uh, his sculpture seed is housed in the central core, so the sculpture of this sculptor, Randall Page, an area of the building designed collaboratively between Grimshaw, Randall Page, the sculptor, and the photographic artist, Susan Durgis, and I urge you as future architects or architects, collaborate with artists. Don't let them die having no uh, jobs and uh, collaborate with a painter, with a sculptor, with a media artist, engage the artists, it, it will benefit the work. We should go back to a, a collaboration between architects and, and, and artists in general. We don't do this now, but it should be done because there are in every country and in our country as well, uh, many artists who have nothing to do except maybe paint in their attic, in solitude and maybe even depression, engage them in projects for any project, even a small house, engage an artist, engage a sculptor, a painter, whatever, uh, they will bring something to the work, a different sensitivity. And I think that sensibility is important. So as Grimshaw work here together with the sculptor and the photographic artist, I also think in Romania, architects could work with, uh, with, uh, with artists quite well. So as a counterpoint to the noise and bustle outside, this space provides a quiet contemplative environment for the appreciation of natural forms. So uh, I think this is the visitor center and then here you have the, you know, where the, the plants are and so on. And we are going to see the, the sculpture, the seed by the sculptor as well. It's an interesting architecture, you know, it's, it's, it's not a banal architecture at all. It's high tech, but it's also, uh, because of its uh, plastic, uh, you know, valve is, uh, is uh, interesting, aesthetically speaking.
this is the this is the sculpture the seed and yes the seed is uh, you know Lucian Blaga would call it mirabila semenza in a way everything is about the seed about the beginning Brancu should call it the egg perhaps it's all about the same thing the beginning So you see, it is a, a place for science in many in many ways, but also, you know, because of this preoccupation with the symbolism of the seed, it, 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 its meanings go beyond, uh, you know, science. It's it's about almost myth mythology, the mythology of life, the biology, the know the poetry even you know it's 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 literally more than just about science and high tech and so on and even uh, you know the roofing uh, you know it makes you think of the of the uh, sunflower you know it's it's a good it's a good building and it's a good project and it's a good enterprise and and the fact that it also uh, employed unemployed people is is remarkable Now, exper Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center in Troy, the United States. This facility gives uh, Rensselaer, uh, I don't know if I pronounce well. This is a very, I, I suggest to you, the people who are here, to check <coughs> the projects because they have an architecture school at this Polytechnic Institute with a name which is a little bit difficult for me to pronounce, Rensselaer. They have an excellent architecture school with a very, very, very innovative uh, uh, projects. Check them out. Uh, the, this Rensselaer, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, a cutting edge, immersive performance environment housed in a singular design that conveys the project's substantial contribution to the campus. So Nicholas Grimshaw designed this building for this uh, institute uh, in, in the state of New York, in the United States. Uh, within the glazed building envelope, the concert hall forms the project's centerpiece and is made of an immense, curvaceous, wooden hull clad in sustainable Western red cedar, recalling the beauty and craftsmanship of a fine musical instrument the soaring hall is attuned to world-class performances. The building's warm golden exterior holds a shoebox form. Inside that includes optimized acoustics and new material technologies to support a broad range of musical entertainment, giving outstanding facilities for guests, performance of students. EMPAC encourages the high programmatic standards that befit this school's established elegance. Well, for me, the build, this building is rather officious, so to speak, uh, you know, it seems to be almost symmetrical, but there are interesting things inside, you know, the, uh, it, it's still a good building, but maybe a little bit for my taste, a little bit too, I don't know. I, I mean, I wish, uh, you know, the curvatures present here would, would outburst a little bit and not just be flattened by a flat roof. But, you know, easy for me to, to criticize from here. The building was built and apparently it functions well. It's a, and again, please check. I, I discovered myself uh, two, or two years ago, 10 projects by students in architecture. This, uh, this, uh, Polytechnic Institute, they were unbelievable, uh, truly unbelievable. Anyway, this is a concert hall there, it's not the school itself.
So he, he designed it inspired by the design of a, of a, of a violin. So you can actually find inspiration for your projects in anything. You can start from a violin or I don't know what else. But the idea is to abstract, not to become literal, like he did here. You know, he, the design he arrived at is abstract. Now, a home-based superstore in, in UK, in Brentford, um, a retail center, I have a lot of text here. Usually I don't have so much text. I, I am uh, uncomfortable to read a lot of text, a lot of text because it could be boring. Better look at the images and I'll make some comments. Just like in the first project, the ice skating ring that, that we saw, he also uses the same kind of suspending structure, which becomes also a sculptural element. Otherwise the building itself is not really spectacular at all. But because of the structure that suspends the roofing uh, is uh, all of a sudden a special building. It's a store, but uh, you know, archite architecturally interesting. I'm not so sure about these uh, things on the, on, on the side. But uh, I guess considering the curvature also of, of, of these fragments of the roof, maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. But this is very nice, I think. Just a must, another must, M-U-S-T, like, um, like in the case of the, the ice skating ring. So again, the structure, if it is um, elegant and uh, refined and uh, innovative, could have aesthetic values truly uh, remarkable. I rush a little bit because we still have to, to, to look at uh, two other architects and, and not uh, unimportant. Via Verde, the Greenway in New York is a, is a, uh, he, he won the first jury design competition for affordable housing in New York City. The brief called for the ability to replicate the design, sustainable practices and healthy living principles in the hope that this scheme can be a model for future developments in the city. So it's a mixed use, mixed income residential development. Uh, so they have units for uh, you know middle income house, uh, households and also for low and moderate income rentals. A dy dynamic garden serves as the organizing element for the community, beginning as a ground level courtyard and then spiraling upwards towards through a series of programmed south facing roof gardens, creating a promenade for residents. Each apartment has two facades, allowing plenty of cross ventilation. And I, I will stress here that it's very important for apartments to have the chains of cross ventilation. Uh, and uh, this can be done, uh, but uh, you have to, 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 to quest for it. And daylight as well as low VOC finishes, I don't know what VOC is, water and energy conserving fixtures. So you see, the, the preoccupation was not just with, uh, with aesthetics, but also with uh, all the other problems that uh, make life uh, today, uh, uh, you know, uh, challenged in a way and challenging. That's why it's called as a Via Verde. Verde, you know what this means. It's, it's green. Via Verde is a model for what affordable housing ought to be, a platform for opportunity, a source of stability, a building block with which we forge neighborhoods, put down roots and build the communities that are the engines of our nation's economic growth. This is what this person wrote. Anyway, this, this is it. It's rather in a way a European model brought to, to the United States um, to some extent because of these social societal uh, concerns.
I think it's an interesting and viable work. And you know, you have uh, you know green spaces. You have uh, you know the, the the blocks of flats. You have uh, the stadium here. It's 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 a combination. It's a hybrid. Uh, it's a hybrid building, and uh, as such, I think it's very appropriate for our time. And these are not expensive, you know, this is another thing. Also color, color is present and color should be present. We shouldn't have too much whiteness, you know, whiteness and whiteness and whiteness. No, and uh, there are also various materials used. So there is a richness, you know, uh, tectonic e e e uh, richness as well. So you see the, the terraces at the top, uh, you know, treated um, in complex ways, you know, with gardening, with uh, all kinds of things. And uh, they are even aesthetically pleasant. Now, Education City tram stops in Doha, in Qatar. Uh, so he designed the tram, tram station, I don't know if one or several. Uh, Grimshaw was engaged by the consortium to design a series, a series, series of 17 third grade open air stops for the system, which were all developed as variations of a single architectural and structural design. The minimalist design integrates the structure and enclosure in a way that makes them one and the same. Uh, elliptical columns spanning the tram tracks and sheltering waiting booths and station furniture below. Building services were carefully integrated with the structure in order to support the tram's operation. Very elegant again, and again, mainly because of the, of the innovative uh, you know, uh, use of, uh, of, uh, of the structure.
as you can see, everything is studied very carefully, every single detail. And uh, this is important. It has been said that in architecture, there are no details in the sense that everything matters. And it's true, everything matters. You see, a, a structural element could be sculpturally very interesting. This is actually like an abstract sculpture, but its role is, you know, functional. But aesthetically, indeed, could could be seen as a sculpture, and and it is. Now, the Fulton Center in New York City drawing inspiration from the neighborhoods, cast iron buildings and incorporating the restored Corbin building, this extensive uh, complex offers improved accessibility to New York City storied mass transit system in a durable, elegant setting. The transit hub, it's a transit hub atrium, rises 34 meters and is stopped by a conical dome centered on the concourse below. Here it is. Now, you know, it's a transit hub. It's not a cathedral, it's not a mosque, it's not a, you know, a, some kind of a sacred space. It's a, it's a, it's a transportation hub. I, I don't know, I mean, why not, you know, but this kind of architecture somehow, you know, makes you wonder, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I am a little bit uh, uh, ambivalent about this because essentially you have here, you know, a function which is very mundane and prosaic and this kind of centrality with the light coming from above, you see when these people are looking up, but maybe through contrast, I don't know. Um, it's elegant. It's another elegant building by Nicholas Grimshaw. Um, I don't know very well what to think of this um, effort to create this uh, centralized uh, space with an almost divine light coming from above in, in an otherwise highly commercial um, you know, context. And you see who is uh, advertising here, Burberry. So uh, we have uh, you know, high-end uh, names in the name of commerce, but, but this um, roofing, uh, I don't know. To me, it's a little bit uh, disproportionately um, advocating something else. It's like making a shopping shopping center, you know, uh, or shopping mall within a large cathedral or something uh, a little bit, uh, in my opinion, problematic here. And you can see even in the section, you know, I mean, this building, all of it is destined for transportation and uh, shopping and so on. But this thing above is, um, it belongs to something else. What is it saying? What, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's an effort which, um, it's not really asked for by, by the functions beneath. But anyway, it was built in this way.
and as in the other buildings by Grimshaw, the technological uh, know-how is, uh, is uh, incredible. Okay, so let's wish him happy birthday.